Good afternoon and welcome along to Destination Wellbeing. My guest this afternoon is Sinead Hoban. You're very welcome to Destination Wellbeing, Thank Sinead. Thank you, Joanne. Um, and Sinead and I this afternoon are going to be talking sort of all things pregnancy and we'll hopefully over the next a number of episodes of Destination Wellbeing have different women in with different experiences of pregnancy. Sinead's Sinead the yeah. first to join us this morning, um, or this afternoon even. And our just to mention, um, sure, purely Sinead and I will be sharing our experiences, um, certainly Sinead's own personal experiences of um, pregnancy and breastfeeding, and I'll be sharing some experiences that I've picked up along the way in working with women through reflexology. It's one of those things that a lot of women have when they're pregnant, uh, towards, certainly towards the end, is reflexology. So over the years, I've been um, pleasured, really honoured to have that role in women's lives in those last few weeks mm -hmm. when they're coming up to birth and ready to give birth that they have trusted me with their feet really yes, I suppose yes. is the big thing yes. um, I know we have a just a we mention of a disclaimer just there if um, Andrew wants to pop it up for us just encouraging anybody to take maybe on board some of the stuff that Shane and I are saying today but always to do their own research and if they have any concerns around pregnancy either physical or emotional health or well-being to contact their GP yeah, and always definitely. have a chat with either their GP their midwife or their health visitor. Mm -hmm. um, so Sinead, um, Breastfeeding Mums is um, your website and yes. that's where you operate off. Um, we've been chatting a bit this afternoon around some of those experiences mm -hmm. but um, really you come up with the website based on your own experience. Yes, when I, well with my first baby I found, although I breastfed for 15 months, I found it very, a very lonely experience in many ways because the people didn't really talk about it so much. Now that's only 13, 14 years ago. Um, I always knew it was something I would do, but it was very different knowing what you're going to do and planning for it to what the experience was actually like. And then when she was born, I had committed myself to it in my own head. So I thought, I have to stick this out. And at the moment, the way the guidelines work is you're advised to try to breastfeed exclusively for the first six months of the baby's life. At that stage, when, when I had Tara, it was four months. So from the very beginning, I felt under pressure that I had to breastfeed her for four months. And it wasn't as easy as I maybe thought it was going to be. You know, I had it in my head. It's, it's natural. It's nature's way. Everything will happen as it's supposed to. But what I didn't realize was that some babies, and mine was one of them, they want to feed a lot. And they want to feed every half an hour, every two hours, every three hours. And it goes on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so I was quite, I found it a difficult experience. I persevered with it and, you know, at, at when the time was right for her to stop, she stopped. But when I had my second baby then, again, I started to realise, you know, I'm on my own here and this is, this is going to be another tough journey. Mm -hmm. But by that stage, there was a local breastfeeding group in Uri, um run by Arana. Yeah. And it was a lifesaver. It made things so much easier second time round because you weren't focusing on three months down the line, six months down the line, 12 months down the line. You were actually thinking, I can do it for another week. Yeah. And yeah. you were walking into a room full of other women who were breastfeeding. Whereas with, when women are feeding their baby formula or, or, or even breast milk in a bottle, you know, they're sitting, they're able to feed their baby in the town. Yeah. Um, they're able to meet one another and chat about it and maybe what milk they're on or what style of feeding suits them best. With breastfeeding that was, you know, it's not really talked about enough. And it's quite a private it thing is a for private women as well. Thing. To, and some women are quite past. comfortable breastfeeding in public. I never was. You know, I always felt a bit uncomfortable just because that's my personality. I wanted to just do it at home or I wanted to find a wee quiet spot to do it. Um, in the breastfeeding support group, you realised that you weren't alone and there were lots of other women who were, you know, maybe around the same age as me at the time. Yeah. Um, and it just was something I made a lot of friends through it and even now people come up to me and say hello Sinead I know you from you know Arana yeah. and it could have been from 10 years ago when I was breastfeeding my 10 year old it could have been from eight years ago when it was my eight year old um, you know so you make lifelong friends and you have people well at the same level and of people where at the you're same at level. the same Are age you? group going through similar everybody's experience is different yes, but yeah. similar challenges yeah. or but certainly there's more chance that those people in the room are experiencing what you're experiencing oh, definitely, than yeah. just maybe other friends yeah. who have children of different ages and different yeah. things like it that. It was just nice. Like, even, you know, when, when I first went maybe with my second daughter, Sarah, you know, I was taking her in when she was maybe three or four weeks old and there were women in the room whose babies were a year old and there were other women coming in, their babies were just 
one or two weeks old, you know. So you had a whole range of baby ages and you you know, you'd be looking going, Well, you know, my baby's not the youngest now or my baby's one of the oldest yeah, still here. And, and I think actually and they're not gonna stay the same. Yes, they're not gonna well, stay this, the same. This, no. This phase that we're in is is that it's a phase it is, now yeah, and it'll yeah. it'll change because the baby's gonna grow and the baby yeah. their demands might change. It might not get exactly. any easier, but and they're some not people's stay babies the same. sleep all night. And some babies don't. I never had sleepers. <laughs> and I still don't have a sleeper. <laughs> you know, my youngest is two now and she's still waking it up three and four times a night. Um, so, you know, there's, there are problems in, in some ways, but the benefits, in my opinion, outweigh all that, you know. And, and it's, it's a decision I made that I'm always happy I made. And in fact, that was why my breastfeeding website came about, you know, 10 years ago. It maybe wasn't so easy to find information about breastfeeding or about pregnancy online. And because I I trained as a teacher, I felt I could put my teaching skills towards helping women to breastfeed rather than, you know, teaching schoolgirls yeah. or schoolboys, yeah. you know. And, uh, and it was a completely different area for me because I was an English, English and drama teacher. Um, breastfeeding was something completely different, but just something that fascinated me. Yeah, and sure. That was how the, the website came about then. Yeah. And I suppose um, increasingly, I, I think one of the big things is is that now there's, whilst there was a time when it wasn't actively encouraged, yeah. um, it's now quite actively encouraged and, and forcefully. But I think one of the pressures that that can bring as well is, as you were, you were talking about, like the guidelines being, and as a new mum, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a first time mum or and each baby's new and you yeah. want, you know, mums that I meet all the time where they're so passionate about doing the best that they can do and exactly, putting themselves yeah. under so much pressure. Whereas yeah. that idea of saying, well, I'll just get to next week. Oh, or I'll just get to today. Yeah, yeah. Um, every yeah. wee bit Or even counts. I'll get to the next feed. You know, yeah. at some stage, you, you, you're maybe, your baby's maybe going through, uh, they call it cluster feeding at, at some points, you know, um, or it's, it's just basically, breast milk's very light. So it, it goes through the baby's tummy very quickly. Um, whereas formula milk, is a bit heavier, so they maybe go a wee bit longer between feeds. Um, you you know you you just have to sort of do what feels right yeah. for you. Yeah. And if it's you know, for me the way that I find it easiest to cope is just thinking, I'm going to get another feed. We'll get this one out of the way, and then you know it might only be half an hour, it might be an hour, it might be three hours, and then we'll do another feed and see how it goes. And I tried not to say to myself, I'm going to I'm going to do this for two years now. You because know, or I'm going to do this for six months. You've got two expectations. Yeah, one, you have yeah. the expectation to do it, and then you have the, the feelings of natural failure. Yes. If you don't, if you put yeah. yourself under yeah. that pressure. And I mean, breastfeeding doesn't suit all, all mothers either. You know, I've never been one for judging a mother because she chose to breastfeed or because she chose not to. Some women can't do it. Some women, their family circumstances don't allow it, or maybe they've got the pressures of other children and they just don't they don't feel it's something for them yeah, yeah. and then I've, I've known people who you know maybe their first two or three children were formula fed and then they decided I'll give this breastfeeding a try yeah. and then you know one one particular person she ended up breastfeeding her child for like three years I think you know yeah. <laughs> funny we did talk at home and I actually was talking to mum about it last night sort of thinking about the show today and um, my mum had sections with the three of us and breastfed after the three of us, okay, yeah. and with one of us, she took Bell's palsy, and with the, another one, my, my brother, and there's only 18 months between me and him. With me, she took Bell's palsy. With him, she had to have a blood transfusion. Oh, and with my sister, she took a reaction to the anesthetic. Right. So she, was so she really quite didn't have an easy. <laughs> she really didn't have an easy time. And she said, like there was times when she actually felt that they were nearly handing her the baby and thinking, now watch her because she's just not wise. Yes. <laughs> no, just, why would anybody put themselves through this? Yeah. There's yeah. actually she's she's going to lose the plot here because yes, yeah. she's putting herself under yeah. so much pressure. But like that, I think one of the reasons that she often talks about is is that particularly having had a section, she felt it was something she wanted to do yeah. so that her body connected with the pregnancy yes, and yeah. that the hormones balanced themselves out yeah. so the, the body knew well I have a baby here uh, yeah, and, and yeah, it's mine yeah um and you know like that too would say once you get over the first couple of weeks and get it settled it yeah becomes... I always find in my own experience and from talking to other mothers too that maybe the first six or eight weeks are very difficult and then you have colic kicking in as well maybe so you know I, I have seen myself pacing rooms you know I'm going, I can't do this 
anymore. And then the baby starts crying once another feed and you give it its feed. And then the good thing about breastfeeding is because of the, the chemicals that your body releases, they do relax you. So while you're actually feeding the baby, you come down sort of out of that panic and you sit and you relax and you have a glass of water beside you and you have your remote control yeah. beside you. And, and it feels okay and it and feels it's good okay, and yeah, it starts. Yeah. And in fact, same. even although breastfeed babies tend to feed, you know, some of them, mine in particular, <laughs> feed, feed a lot during the night. One of the things that I found, although I'm awake three, four, five times a night, is the hormones also allow you to go straight back to sleep. So because you have the right level it's of not hormones like, being released. I always think it must be very difficult if you have to get up and make a bottle. You know, your baby's screaming and you're down trying to maybe get a bottle warmed up um, while this baby's getting itself more and more distressed. So for me, it, that, that has been a benefit. Yeah. And to, you're properly you know, awake as well. And I know that, I'm sure yeah, you're properly yeah. awake when you're, you're in your feet as well. But when you have to get always. out of bed, yeah, down, yeah, you, yeah. you wake up, you're to get back fully waking because yeah. your, your feet yeah. have touched the ground and you've, you've yeah. a whole um, other... That's right. You've, you've, <laughs> it's like even sometimes, you know, when you're lying and you think, no, I'm not looking at the alarm clock. I'm not going to look at the alarm clock. I'm yeah. not look. And you look at the phone and you look at the alarm, and that's you really And awake. that's it, yeah. You're, yeah. you're probably And then you're looking and going, I was awake an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still awake. Yeah, I haven't yeah. gone back to sleep. Yeah. Um, but I suppose recently breastfeeding has hit the press quite a bit in terms of, um, I think they're trialling in some parts of the UK around um, offering areas, particular areas where breastfeeding rates are very mm -hmm. low. Um, they're offering a financial incentive of, I think, about £200. Um, and again, we were talking about this yeah, previously, yeah. and we were just saying that, you know, well, and I think the general consensus across the board is mm -hmm. is that it's unlikely to make that big of a difference um, yeah i would agree with that um i i think offering women money to breastfeed you know whereas it, it might have a particular woman in particular circumstances i don't really think it's going to up the breastfeeding rate rate significantly because i think if you want to breastfeed, it's something you have to want to do within yourself. It's a real lifestyle choice. It is a really, lifestyle it, choice. So. And I know people who really wanted to do it, but just found that they weren't able to. It, it, it just took too much out of them. Yeah. You know, you've just gone through nine months of, you know, your body changing. Drastically. And a, a yeah. changing, changing drastically. And especially when it's the first time around, you don't know what to expect. And then to get over the pregnancy, get over the shock of birth, Mm -hmm. and your body's trying to recover and then you're looking at this little tiny person who's relying on you to look after it and to feed it yeah. and then you're maybe asking your body to do that as well for some women that's just too much they just can't cope with that and that's fine you know for other women it's just a continuation of the pregnancy yeah. and I don't think offering money is really going to change the woman has to really want to do it to I, succeed I at it possibly puts an added bur burden on as well. I do think so, well, yeah, yeah. The difficulty is, yeah. is how it's policed. And you may and, have people um, in the family pressurising them then, well, you know, we'll get this amount of money if you breastfeed, so yeah. you breastfeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that another can be, yeah, but, and about. how it's monitored, you know, at what point yeah. is somebody, somebody going say, to come in and you know, watch are you? Are you still breastfeeding? Yeah, yeah. You and yeah. where does that come in? So it's, to me, it sounds just a wee bit like a, a panicked yeah. solution it's like policing to try and, breastfeeding, yeah, really, how, to, it? Yeah. how to allow it to happen yeah, yeah. best, whereas, I as you said, the support. The support is much more important. Mm -hmm. And I think the support, I've always believed it should start in school. And that not just girls are educated about it, but, you know, boys too, because men need to, um, you know, young, young fellas need to understand that this is their baby as well, yeah. you know, and breastfeeding is what's best for it. And if they're able to support their wives or their girlfriends, that makes a big difference too. Yeah, you know, through the whole process. Through and the whole girls, process, yeah. Um, can feel that it's normal. And yes, it's feel okay it's normal and, and, it's and feel natural. comfortable doing it. And thankfully, I've never ever, you know, been in a situation where anybody has been negative mm -hmm. towards me when I've had to feed a baby. Like I, I, you know, like most new mothers, you have to go out, you have to get groceries, and if your baby starts screaming, wanting to be fed, you have to go and try and find somewhere to feed it. I know people who have had comments directed at them. I've thankfully never experienced that, but that's an, another pressure that some girls are under that they maybe just wouldn't be able to cope with. They wouldn't know what to say or what to do. And again, yeah. and that's all so personal and so unique. And it is, um, yeah. I think even when we go through, um, you know, that's that, that's the breastfeeding side of it. But just even yeah. in pregnancy, 
Um, yeah. Again, I think that pressure that women have that, you know, I have to conform to this and I have to be perfect and yeah. it has to be this. Um, if we can accept that we're all unique and everybody's experience and every birth will be different. Every birth is um, very different, yeah. yeah. I think for me personally, again, going into, you know, when, when you're pregnant for the first time, it's all new and you don't really know what to expect from one week to the next and you've got your pregnancy books and you're reading week one, yeah. week two, what's going to happen and, you know, you've your, now, now we have, you know, online apps advice. Apps even, I've had, apps, um, yeah. you know, I know some of the girls that are coming to me now who be quite techy yeah. um, and they're, you know, they have their app with their, this yeah. is what your baby's doing now exactly. and this is what yeah. it's doing yeah. now and, um, and, and so it many weeks, you actually this is what bond a lot more, you know, like when you're telling maybe your own parents what stage the baby's at, they're going, you know, we, we wouldn't have known that years ago. Or, you know, when you're going for a scan and the excitement of seeing your baby on a scan and seeing it move and, you know, you can start to bond really, like you bond with it anyway, but you bond even more maybe or you, you start to build a relationship with the baby earlier because of all the scans and the Yeah, I think as well we have, uh, information you know, we, we have a, a world that we tend to, that probably was okay. 30, 40 years ago yeah. because things were the intangible. Yeah. The norm was that there was a certain world outside of us. Like now, yeah. even somebody decided to go on holidays can log on, they can see the weather in wherever they are, yeah. they can check it That's out, it. they have it at the touch <laughs> of the fingers. You, you know, you can Google Maps and see the street that you're going to be staying yeah. in and stuff yeah. like that. So it's a natural progression yeah. that we would need or or need that feeling whereas yeah. somebody 30 years ago going on holidays just went they just went that's <laughs> they right had the baby. they just <laughs> went in had the baby and, yeah. and yeah. whatever happened kind of came yes. with that yeah. or 30 40 yeah. years ago i think it's um, lovely now the way things have changed that you can plan ahead to for your birth you know women in the past couldn't do that or they maybe didn't even know what was going to happen when they went in to give birth yeah. you know i um i'm very early birth, having a birth plan and it was something that nobody, nobody really talked to me about it. It was just something I realized from reading books when I was expecting my first baby, you know, oh, you can write down what you want. Mm -hmm. But I know people have said to me, have you done that? I'd be afraid to do that. I'd be afraid of offending the staff in the hospital if I came in and said, this is what I want. This is how I want my birth to progress. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done it for each of my babies and each time I had I had all four of mine in Daisy Hill and each time you know they were they, the, the staff were very happy that I was letting them know what I wanted well, and I always say to them look you know if things change you know I would like it to progress this way but it's not like you know you don't have you know it doesn't have to go this way this is in a perfect situation yeah. I would like it to be this yeah. way but if and it doesn't happen for whatever reason that's fine you know I left it quite open and yeah. yeah it doesn't have to be written in stone either exactly, but it's yeah. an idea it's like um whenever I'm doing sort of confidence building workshops and things like that with with whether they're young people or, or older people um we talk about using the things that you know that can help you feel more yeah. confident and whether that's if you're given a talk to have notes and have preparation yes. or whether that's yeah. going in to have your baby yeah um if you have sort of a plan or you've yeah. thought out and you've even if you don't it, say it to anybody even yeah. if it's just in your own head yeah. you know yeah. you can sort of work get your head that. you can work through it yeah. and get your your head around it yeah and you've yeah. understood you've thought about the different stages and what yeah. needs to yeah. happen at the different times and, yeah. and where where you yeah. are um in that journey and from your, have you noticed much of a difference from your eldest to your youngest in terms of um, even just facilities that are available or services that are being offered to women? Or um, is there, has that changed much? Or is it well, as I said, much? if you go back to the breastfeeding support, mm -hmm. yes, you know, I that's something, there wasn't so much of that when I was, you know, when I had my first baby. This time around, there's a lot more support for women. Mm -hmm. And with the pregnancy, I find this time around, the first time when I brought in my birth plan when I was having my first baby, I remember them just sort of, you know, this cursory glance at it, just looked at, okay, that's the way you want and that was it. With my last baby, there's a, there's a big gap. She's only two, you know, there's a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old in between. But when I went in to have the 2-year-old, um, they read down through the plan and talked it through with me and they were very, very positive about everything. and. I remember one of the midwives actually saying to me, I wish everybody would come in with one of these, yeah. you know, which made me feel very good about myself yeah. because, I, you know, you do feel a wee bit like this is their territory and I don't want to be telling people how to do their jobs. Yeah. But 
I also wanted the birth to go the way I wanted it. And actually, I was telling you this earlier, one of the things that I was very keen on doing was cutting the cord. Yeah. Um, now, my husband had done it for one of our babies and he just really wasn't keen. He didn't like the sensor. He didn't want to do it at all. So I said, well, if you won't do it, I would like to do it because I just felt it would be nice if, if one of us made that, you know, the break, you know, from the baby to the womb into your arms. And it was, it was actually a real privilege. It felt, you know, it was something that was, you know, some people say it as a medical procedure. They helped, the staff helped me, taught me exactly what to do. I snipped the cord and afterwards they were laughing. They said in all the years in the hospital, I was the first mother who had ever asked right. to cut the cord yeah. herself. Right. And they thought that it was just a lovely thing, thing you know, yeah. thing to do. And they were saying they hoped more, you know, they would like more women to come in and yeah. cut their own cord. And I suppose <laughs> by having, you know, by the time it was your fourth pregnancy, you probably felt quite okay about about yeah. that yourself and about the whole yeah. process. Although I think you always thing. worry, you know, you never, you never go into pregnancy assuming that everything's going to be all right and I think every mother's the same you know and with each baby you have you worry that something something might go wrong during the pregnancy either with you or with your baby or you worry that something will happen during the labour yeah, you've always that you you know your other children you know that things mightn't go well and what would happen the rest of the children so there is always a worry yeah, yeah, you know you never go into it feeling blasé about it. No, it's not. You know, I mean, it's because, it, again, yeah. it's, everyone's unique yeah. and everyone's different. Yeah. But um, It is quite nerve-wracking, especially as, as it's building up to, you know, this 40-week <laughs> yeah. date that you've imprinted in your head. And for me, each of my babies was born, you know, a few weeks early. So I never actually got to the stage where I was 40 weeks and really fed up with everything, you know. Um, but one of the things I did, I do, I'm a worrier by nature, and one of the things that I found just really helpful was I had a wee bottle of lavender <laughs> and for every single pregnancy in the car I was sitting yeah. sniffing oh, the bottle. Yeah. Um, and some of the viewers will have heard my story about lavender where we have a bit of a, a ongoing joke in our house that lavender fixes everything. Oh yeah. Um, you know <laughs> you, what do you need for that? Oh lavender, lavender. Um, but uh, yeah. in fact I have a friend and her son runs about and says where's your mom with her lavender now <laughs> you know, no matter what no, I must say a pain relief uh, lavender's yeah. no good yeah, when no, you're no, no, when you're it, yeah. um, but that brings us on to another point is yeah. the importance of relaxation during pregnancy and yeah, yeah. it's one of the things that as you said that you know you've got this 40 week state in your yeah, head and yeah. you've got the due date and often I'll meet women who'll say you know I was told to go for reflexology if I went over. Right. And yeah. one of the things I'd say was, you know, enjoy the amazing benefits yeah. of it before you're you even get pregnancy. to that stage yeah. so yeah. that you hope that you don't. Um, in fact, a few weeks, a few months ago, um, during the summer, I was with a, a girl who'd been coming to me for reflexology for, for fertility and sort of mm -hmm. right through pregnancy then. And um, right up until you know right through her layer she went into labor her waters broke on the on a, in the morning mm -hmm. um and right through the day then she she called me later on that evening she was, went up to the hospital yeah. was sent home and they said no it's early you could be a while yet yeah, you know yeah, go yeah. home relax yeah. have a bath do whatever and um so she rang me and she said is there any chance are you free could you yeah. come down so that was um, good thinking i was working, <laughs> working away we went up into a dark room and we closed the you know yeah. turned out the lights yeah. and we worked away yeah. and we done some reflexology and um, gradually our contractions were shortened to the point where I said look you know we really we need to go now yes yeah <laughs> and she left the house just finished her reflexology session and nice and, and mellow and nice and mellow and, and off she went so um and thankfully every baby was born later on that evening but um I think that's one of the things that certainly I would really try to encourage women yeah. is to try and take some time out of course it can be difficult and it can be hard but a wee hour to yourself yeah. in a week um, whether yeah. it's for reflexology, whether it's to get your hair done, whether yeah. it's to try and just oh, I think that's go away important. Yeah. and walk around, you know, do yeah. something me that's time. just a wee bit of me <laughs> time, bit of me time. Um, in the middle of the chaos. Yeah. And you were talking about reading up in first pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's one of the things, first baby, yeah. all the preps done, yeah. everything yeah. goes. And then By the time you get to your fourth baby, you don't really have time to be reading <laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> even your second because you've got most, yeah, most yeah. people and not obviously everybody but yeah. a lot of people will have a toddler That's right, about yeah. or a young yeah. child yeah. who's maybe starting school and you've got yeah. all of those demands yeah. and you can't sleep maybe when you want to no. sleep and well, you that's, can't. that was one of the things and I, I mean you know I don't want to keep going on about breastfeeding but when you're breastfeeding you need your rest because your body's trying to make milk for you know another 
human to survive. Um, what I found with my first baby, because I just had her, and just pregnancy itself, exhaustion, having a baby exhaust you, it's important to try and get as much sleep and as much rest as you can. Um, when you only have one baby and you're off on your maternity leave, if the baby wants to sleep, people say, oh, you should sleep when the baby's sleeping. And it's a lot easier to do that when you have one baby <laughs> yeah. than when you have two yeah. babies or three babies. Now, for me, I was, you know, it, it, just the way the timing was, by the time I had my second baby, the first one was just started a wee nursery. Yeah. So I was able to get a bit of rest a during, hours the, during the day. Yeah, it was, it was only three hours yeah. during the day that she was away, but it was a few hours. It meant I could maybe have a lie down if I needed to or just have some time on my own with the new baby. By the time I had my third one, I was in, at that. There's a toddler in the house, a two-year-old in the house and a new baby. Yeah. And the toddler's constantly, you know, going through the terrible twos, looking for attention, feeling put out maybe by this new baby that's, you know, yeah. getting yeah. all mummy's attention or all daddy's attention maybe. Um, you know, so it, well, I find it very difficult now trying to balance the two-year-old and the new baby. Yeah, that's you know, the, I think that's the and that's the experience that yeah. I would have yeah. with a lot of. And you do. I remember even my own mum saying to me, you know, go away and get your hair. Just go and go and get your hair a blow dry once a week, yeah. just so you're away from the children. You just know, a wee yeah, bit of time or go to the pictures. Try and try and make time to go out. For a couple of hours, it doesn't have to be a big night out in the town, which yeah. you don't feel like after you have a baby anyway. Yeah, because you. But it can yeah. just be, you know, to go out for maybe a meal, you yeah. know. And even in pregnancy, again, that like I would know even any of the women that are coming to me like, that I would see, um, would be talking about just how beneficial yeah. that R is. Oh, it just it's, it's it recharges it's like, your batteries. It just it's totally a, recharges yeah, your yeah, batteries, yeah. and whatever you you kind of do, and that's yeah. so. And just to get away from babies and children for a yeah, while, you know, yeah. sometimes you just need to to sort of find yourself yeah, again. Have you know, that wee yeah, bit of that yeah. balance in that time. Um, and I know that's one of the things that also you're quite passionate about, even being able to do it at home, because some yeah. people don't always have the opportunity to yeah. get away, and it depends on what support, yeah. family support, that's, and even partner it. support, yeah. and that, that the women funds. can have, or, and finances. <laughs> yeah, but finance, um, yeah. trying to take a, even a few minutes at home, yeah. um, sometimes I would even say to people, you know, if you can, it's worth even trying to stay awake or waking it up half an hour earlier earlier yeah um, to try and have a bit of yeah. space time yeah. even just to so get up a wee bit earlier you don't, don't have to rush you don't yeah. have to run get you don't bit have to peace and quiet to yourself you can have yeah. a wee bit yeah. of time out to yourself and that's where you're be positive mums yeah be pregnancy, mums pregnancy relaxation yeah. yeah um that's a cd i actually i i use a lot of relaxation cds myself because with four children you know different times you just want half an hour on your own where there's no demands being made of you yeah. and I thought to myself you know it's I can when I was looking for pregnancy relaxation I found and I was saying this to you earlier it was hard to get anything with like you know with a local accent yeah, the voices sometimes not that there's anything wrong with you know other yeah. accents but a lot of them tended to be sort of American or maybe you know English accents and I found when I was listening to them I was maybe Maybe there were words that I was finding it a wee bit hard to make out what they said, so it sort of distracted you. Yeah, it keeps your yeah, brain active. Keeps your brain you're active. To, yeah. your, your natural instinct is to tune in and try and figure out the accent yeah. and where it's coming from yeah, as opposed yeah. to get engaged in the process yeah. of relaxing. So I wanted something that had a more, you know, Irish type yeah. feel to it. The, the accent. Felt the, yeah, comfortable, yeah. felt. Yeah. felt and that your brain well, would recognise even. Exactly, yeah. And I decided I would just make my own, yeah. put my Brilliant. own teaching experience and teaching skills to use. Brilliant. And that was how the pregnancy relaxation yeah. CD and, um, and MP3 came about. <laughs> Brilliant, yes. And the MP3 is available on your website. Yes, it, if you CD. go to yeah. my website, breastfeedingmums.com, yeah. and uh, there's links particular. So Two, it's available as an MP3 or as a CD. Brilliant, yeah. excellent. So well done yeah, on, on doing you. all of the positive work that you're doing <laughs> yeah. to support mums. And I think just to finish off our programme, if we um, summarise kind of the key things that maybe we're, we've both been sharing um, is really support and yeah. encouraging women, yeah. whether it's for pregnancy, whether it's um, afterwards, yeah. whatever, at whatever stage it's at. Um, and as children are growing as well, you know, to, mm -hmm. to try and find peer support if, if it's not an option for maybe family support, as can happen yeah. when people move away from home. And increasingly, yeah. we have more and more people um, who don't live close to families yeah. and things like that too. And then yeah. sometimes they can be close to families and maybe the relationships yeah. aren't right and yeah. all of that. But 
to look like because they're, yeah. I mean, and particularly you know, Sure Start, yeah, they have some great I support. I still tools. use Sure Start facilities a lot. And, you know, there's a lot just locally. And it was only, you know, I'd been away from it for a while because all my older children are at school all day. But, you know, being back at the stage where I had a two year old, I was starting to look into what mother toddler groups were available. Yeah. And I'm surprised at just how many yeah. there are now. Yeah. And for, for people, as you say, who aren't from Newry yeah. or aren't local yeah. at all, it's somewhere where they can go and meet local people yeah. or and just meet other people who are away from home yeah. and make friends. Yeah, I think you know? that's the big thing is, is looking out. And, and that's the same regardless of what aspect yeah. of life yeah. we're going through is to to surround ourselves yes. by other people who may be going through the, the same type of thing. Yeah, you're never on your own. Yeah, There's yeah, always somebody someone, else. Yeah. You can reach out at, yeah. at all stages. Yeah, so. yeah. Shane, thanks a million for your yeah, time this you afternoon. Um, and again, for anybody that wants to contact Sinead um, or find out a bit more information or access our website, it's breastfeedingmums.com. Um, or again, you can even contact me through either Destination Wellbeing or try the alternative and I can pop be in touch with Sinead and we can hopefully allow or give some information that will help with um, the stage that you're at with your baby and with your pregnancy and stuff like that. So um, thank you very much to anybody for listening in this afternoon and thank you Sinead. Thank you.